Thank you, Alex. This is Governor Reynolds. Can you hear me? You're good. Okay. First of all, I want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, I am at McAllen, Texas right now. We had the opportunity to start the morning with a briefing by the president of the border um, security or the border patrol who gave a presentation along with Governor Abbott and the um, Department of Public Safety director uh, for the Department of Public of Texas uh, Public Safety. Uh, after that, we did, of course, the press conference, and then we were able to uh, tour the Rio Grande uh, with the Texas State Patrol, their mar Marine unit, to get some sense of what it, you know, what they do when they're patrolling the border. We had ten governors that, uh, nine governors that joined me today, uh, and that is out of the 26 governors that signed the letter that we sent to President Biden. It's been 16 days uh, since we sent the letter to President Biden. Uh, over half of America's governors that requested a meeting with him to sit down and really talk about how we could address the humanitarian and security crisis uh, that we're experiencing at the southern border. Uh, to, to date, we have not even had an acknowledgement or any response. Uh, so uh, the governors uh, decided to uh, get together and discuss what the gov federal government needs to do to stop uh, the humanitarian and security crisis at the border. Uh, we were able to put together 10 policies uh, that we believe will protect America, restore security, and end the crisis at the border. Uh, we had the opportunity at the press conference to uh, address what those 10 policies were and then open it up for questions. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and uh, open it up for questions. Thank you, Governor. We're going to start off with Kay Henderson, Radio Iowa. Okay, just remember to star six to unmute your line. Governor, I'm wondering if uh, after your trip there, you plan to reassess and send more Iowa officers to Texas uh, to assist at the border you indicated in July that might happen. Yeah, so it'll be one of the things that I continue to look at. I did talk to Governor Abbott about it, as well as the Director of Public Safety. First and foremost, though, one of the 10 policy uh, uh, programs, uh, solutions, excuse me, that were, uh, that we presented to the president is they need to uh, dedicate federal resources to stop the human and drug trafficking that is taking place at the border. It is, a, uh, we're experiencing dangerous levels. It's unbelievable what they're seeing and unconscionable come across this border. Uh, the president has a, has a constitutional responsibility to protect the border and to protect Americans, and he is not doing that. And so if he doesn't step up and do what he needs to do, then, you know, we'll, we're going to have to step up and do what we need to do. But we'll continue to evaluate uh, the situation, and we'll be in, in uh, conversation and communication with both Greg and uh, both Governor Abbott as well as Governor Ducey. We do have some National Guard members down uh, at Arizona right now, small amount, I think it's about 26, and then we just have had a unit leave. Uh, Texas State had been there about a year. Again, another small unit, but we do have some presence uh, on the border right now with our National Guard. Next question is for Stephen Gruber Miller, Des Moines Register. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Thank you, Governor. Well, I guess I'm wondering, you know, uh, what what would be the thing. The, you've, you've joined in this effort asking what the federal government can do. What, what can mm -hmm. Iowa do um, to address this, the humanitarian aspects of this crisis? And mm -hmm. then if you'd allow me uh, like a separate, I'm curious if you've uh, had any thoughts about scheduling a new special session for the legislature for redistricting. No, I haven't had a chance to do that yet. We will do that uh, shortly. I think we'll set a date for that. Uh, but again, I just, you know, when it comes to securing the border, protecting America, and ending the crisis that we're seeing uh, at the southern border, uh, we've laid out 10 very simple policy solutions that the president could implement tomorrow. It doesn't take an act of Congress. He can continue Title 42 public health measures as we're seeing, you know, 18 percent of uh, migrant families are coming across the border testing positive. 20 percent of unaccompanied children that are crossing the border are testing positive for COVID. They've had over 40,000 uh, positive cases. Uh, so they need to continue to implement uh, Title 42. You know, I, I talked about dedicating federal resources. They need to resume deportation of all criminals. Uh, we need to uh, put in place our, the Remain in Mexico policy. That would have a significant impact on stopping 
the tens of thousands of additional uh, migrants that are making their way to the border. We're going to see what we saw a couple weeks ago uh, in Del Rio, but you're going to see that probably magnified, you know, two to three to four times. And so by doing uh, some of the things that we've listed and sent uh, to the president, that would send a clear message uh, that, you know, it's, it's not worth it to try to come to the border and to uh, cross over into the United States. So by him implementing the policies, we secure and stop the poorest border that we have today, and then we can continue to work on the process and how we can streamline and expedite that. David Pitt, next question from the AP. Yes, hello, Governor. Thanks for taking our questions. So mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you've probably heard the uh, criticism is that this is more of a, a political uh, event than anything else. And obviously part of the trip is paid by the Republican governor's group, a nonprofit group. So I guess if maybe you could just address how you mm -hmm. counter that accusation that this is more of a political stunt or a trip than anything else. Thanks. Yeah, well, you're missing the entire purpose of the whole um, uh, trip and what we've done. If that's the takeaway, then, you know, that's part of the problem, actually, David, that people aren't looking at the data. They're not looking at the statistics. I assume you saw 14,000, up to 18,000 uh, illegal migrants that were under the bridge and that were disseminated into the United States. That's about 15,000 illegal immigrants that are now in the United States that we don't even know how we can track or where they're at or what's happened to them. Uh, this administration, I told the story about the 19 young unaccompanied girls that were flown into the Des Moines airport in the middle of the night and then boarded on a charter bus and sent who knows where. We had no knowledge of that. Uh, he needs to be transparent. They need to let uh, governors know uh, when they are sending illegal migrants as well as unaccompanied children into our state because I become responsible for that. And I, my number one priority is to protect the health and safety of Ireland. They need to be transparent. They need to let us know we are seeing increases in fentanyl. We are seeing increases in uh, a meth. We are seeing, you know, th that are coming across the border. Uh, we have the um, director or the president of the Border P Patrol say that the cartel is making $400 million a month smuggling people across the border. And that doesn't even take into account the drugs. And that is killing our kids. They are lacing pot. They are putting uh, they're putting it in, in pills um, and, and the purity of the uh, fentanyl that is crossing the border and making its way to the states is horrific, uh, the, the damage that it can do. In fact, already um, they've confiscated it. And David, that's what they've confiscated. That doesn't even account for what's come across the border uh, that we weren't able to seize. 10,500 pounds. It takes two milligrams to be fatal. That is enough fentanyl to kill seven times the United States population. So if you think this is a political stunt, then people better wake up because this is what's coming across our border. This is what's coming into our state. And we're going to continue to see it escalate because when you're making $400 million a month just on people, think what they're making on drugs and guns and uh, terrorists. I mean, they don't know who's coming across the border, and they're, you know, they they gather us all in one point, and then they bring the drugs and all the people uh, further down 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 the border. So, no, it's not a political stunt. This is the real thing. Biden owns this. Uh, this is a self-inflicted crisis. He overturned all the policies that work. Uh, the border patrol president has been in the border patrol uh, for 25 years, and he said this is the worst that he has ever seen it. 25 years. So, yes, it's real. It's impacting states. It's not staying at the border. And people better pay attention uh, or we're going to continue to see our loved ones uh, pay, pay a price for what's coming across, um, this, across the border. Rod Bossart, um, the Gazette, you have the next question. Rod? Remember to use star six to unmute. Are you there, Rod? Okay, we're gonna go yeah. on to, are you there? Yeah. Uh, okay, sorry. Um, 
I, I just wanted to, wanted to ask what the value was of physically traveling down there. What what are you taking away from this trip that you feel like you didn't know prior to heading to Texas to view well, things? You know, I think, so. Yeah. Thank you for that question. I appreciate it very much. Wouldn't it be nice if the president of the United States and the vice president of the United States took the time to come down to the border to see and to listen to the Border Patrol agents, to listen to the Texas law enforcement, to listen to the, the families, the, the owners of the property that butt up against the border and the safety issues that they're dealing with, the communities that have been overrun with COVID positive, positive um, uh, illegal migrants that are moving into their communities to see their schools impacted, to be threatened, you know, to, to actually hear from the Border Patrol agents when they had 15,000 people that were crossing the river and camping under a bridge to see what kind of a situation uh, they're dealing with and the drugs that are being confiscated. It would be nice for them to come down, not only to go on uh, the, the boat ride that I was able to go on and see what they do on a daily basis, 12 to 14 hour days to protect our border, protect Americans and keep us safe. Um, it'd be nice for him to come down and hear some of the stories. So yes, it's advantageous to look at a map uh, where they show uh, the, the uh, Texas State Patrol shows the, the path of the drugs flowing into the United States. And let me, let me just say with Interstate uh, 35 and 80, we are a direct route in the Midwest to disperse uh, their drugs. And so they had a, they were able to show um, all of that. But I think, you know, it has meaning to come down and see firsthand just how, how expansive the border is, what they're faced with in protecting it. And, you know, they're just walking across because the minute that they set their feet uh, on, on United States soil, then the, the Border Patrol uh, has to start uh, the process. And so the NTA or the NTR, and that's uh, the process of, um, that they go through when, they're, um, when they confiscate uh, any illegal immigrant that stepped on a United States soil. So it, it gave me a better understanding of what they're dealing with and why it really is important that if this president doesn't act, uh, that we're all going to have to step up and do something about it. Last question goes to Philip Reed of KCRG. Governor Reynolds, I talked to the Iowa City Catholic Worker House in Iowa City today, and they said that they were calling on you to be more welcoming to migrants here in Iowa. What is your response to that? Oh, we are very welcoming. In fact, we're one of the most welcoming countries uh, in the world. We bring in over a million immigrants every single year, uh, way more than most countries do. So we are welcoming, for instance, the Afghan refugees we've been working with with them uh, to go through the process and, and make sure that we have some place for them to stay um, and to make sure that we have work and just to, to help them um, to facilitate their move. But first of all, we're a country of laws. And if we don't follow the law, then we're going to turn into exactly what this, these other countries are that they're fleeing from. There is a process in place. If Congress doesn't like it, then they have an obligation to sit down at the table and look at the immigration process, but we are a country of laws, and the minute that we throw those laws out the window, then there is a price to pay, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now, because this administration is not abiding by the law or the Constitution. He has a constitutional um, obligation to protect our border and keep Americans safe, and he's not, and because he's not, and because he's dis just disregarding what the law is, it is why we are seeing hundreds of thousands of migrants that are continuing on their path to come here and cross the border uh, illegally. And so we are a welcoming country, we are a welcoming state, and but we are also a country uh, of, of laws that need to be um, upheld. Thank you, Governor Reynolds. Thank you, thank everyone, you, for everyone. joining me. Thank you. Have a good day.